Afrin here. And today I'm gonna to talk about my surface iron arsenal. I'm finally gonna review that surface iron rod I picked up about a year ago. I'm gonna talk about my brand new surface iron rod. I'm also gonna do a flex test on all the surface iron rods I have so that you guys can see how they bend. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts on all these rods. Seeker PH Alua 93H. First off, I wanna talk about that rod I purchased. It's the Seeker PH Alua. It's the 93H. It's an S-glass rod, and it's rated from 30 to 50 pound. Currently, I have a Torium 20 mounted on this rod. It's a cork-wrapped handle. It's a green blank has black wraps for the guides, and the guides are Fuji graphite. First off, I like the rod. I think it's a very capable rod. It's lightweight in the hand all day. It's something you could fish all day if you needed to. So what's my problem with this rod? Well, first of all, when I was in the store pulling on the rods, I had it matched up against the rod I actually went in there to buy, which was the CalStar GG90J. I was very familiar with that 90J. I never owned one, but I fished it before. I caught yellowtail on it and I liked it. So when pulling on this seeker, I thought to myself, you know what? This is something I wanna try. This is kind of an old school style rod. I really liked the action the rod was giving off. I would consider this seeker more of an old school jig rod, meaning it's a glass rod. It's more flexible. The casts are more of a lob or an arc with a soft lob cast you can get the jig out there pretty far. With all those good things being said, even though I wanted to try this style rod, that more relaxed lob style cast, I'm not that type of fisherman. I fish more stiff graphite rods. So what I'm saying is this is a tool. It's a great tool, it works fine, but I think it's the wrong tool for me. I've put a lot of time into fishing this rod, seeing if I can modify my style, but at this time, this is not the rod for me. Seeker Alua Skinny Butt 10 foot. So the new rod is a Seeker Skinny Butt Alua. It's a 10 foot rod and rated 20 to 50 pounds. They call this a Skinny Butt Alua because the rear handle diameter has a smaller circumference, so it's not so big in the hand all day. I have it mounted up with a Pen Fathom 2 25N. It has an X wrap grip. It's a black blank. It's wrapped with black and olive threads and it features Fuji graphite guides. The graphite guides help the rod to be a little bit more light in hand all day. My impressions on this rod, it is definitely a long rod. It's 10 foot. You can definitely feel the rod in hand when you're fishing all day. Well, it definitely casts far. This is more of a stiff rod. It suits my fishing style more and I've been able to cast the jig very far. I don't have a number on how far it casts, but when I get a good cast out of it, the jig does fly. So far, I like the rod. I can't give a full endorsement on it until I hook a big yellowtail. But casting the rod, catching bonito and calico bass, the rod feels pretty good. The rod feels good. From my last trip, I did reposition the reel. When I was in the water, I was checking the length to see how it felt. The 10 foot feels kind of long while casting. So I just felt like I needed a little bit more butt section. I ended up moving the reel forward on the rod. We'll see how that goes on the trips coming up next. I mean, overall, it's a good rod. It feels good. It's 10 foot, it's my first 10 foot jig stick and I'm ready to work with it throughout the year. One reason why this rod fits my style of fishing is because it is so stiff. When I'm fishing inshore calico bass, all my rods are stiff graphite rods. I would say that they all bend at a 70-30 70% backbone, 30% tip, and this rod fits right in line with that. So on a day when I'm fishing, I can easily pick up any rod on the boat and give it the same style cast I typically do, and the rod responds the way I want it to. Versus when I'm with that 93H Seeker, I have to change my casting style. I have to remember that I'm gonna lob the bait out there, and that mentally affects the way I fish. Calstar. GG 6480. Now this rod is the Calstar GG 6480. It's a heavy and it's rated from 30 to 50 pound line class. I purchased this rod for surface iron when I'm kayak fishing or when I'm traveling to Cedros Island. Eight foot is the max I like to go when kayak fishing. When you fish a longer rod on the kayak and hook a bigger fish, there's just so much rod out in front of you that sometimes it's hard, it's hard to manage the fish. At the time we were fishing Cedros Island, there was an eight foot rod maximum for the airplane. 
So that's why I went and searched for an eight foot jig stick. This rod is mounted with a Tranx 500 and in hand, this is a perfect setup. I absolutely have no doubt when I pick up this rod and reel that I'm gonna be able to cast it properly, retrieve it properly. And when I hook a fish, from my experiences, I know that this rod is going to totally kick ass. So I fished this setup locally on the kayak. I was able to hook into a nice yellowtail while standing. I was able to fight that fish easily. No gaff that day. Grabbed that fish by the jig, brought it on the kayak. Yeah. I fished the rod locally. Was able to get into a nice yellow on a bumpy day. The fish knocked the jig out of the water and came back and ate it. The eight foot rod provided great leverage. Yellowtail. You wanna keep fishing? Fish. You wanna get the gap? No, no. Strong jig. Yeah. We're out here doing it. Woo! Yellowtail, keep your 25 light. Mint. <laughs> and then really seeing what this rod could do is when I took it to Cedrus Island last year, and whooped the yellowtail. I'd say the yellowtail were borderline wide open. It was cast and wind. You still had to catch them. They weren't popping on every bait you threw out. I was able to catch in the double digits that day. And with this setup, I actually never got tired. And now talking about this rod and reel, it gets me wondering why am I trying to fish something different? When I know the surface iron rod and reel works, it's proven, I know I can catch on it, it's trustworthy. So I'm actually considering using this rod and reel as my surface iron setup moving forward. There we go. On the outside. Let's go ahead and do a flex test on all these rods to give you guys a better understanding of what the bends look like. And then at the end of the flex test, I'll make a composite photo so that you can see how all the rods bend against each other. First up is that Seeker PH93. Here, I got a little angle on the pool and you can see where the rod is bending. It's kind of a deep bend. I would consider this about a 60-40 bend. You got about a 60% backbone and about 40% bend through that tip. Here's another look at it going more vertical with the pull and you can see how deep that bend is going. You can see that bend going through the backbone and how much tip play there is. Here's that seeker, skinny butt, 10 foot of Lua. You can see the bend on it here. I would consider this almost an 80-20 bend Look at that backbone, super stiff, and a little bit of whip in that tip. And when I get more vertical over the pool, you can see how stiff that backbone actually is. And here's the Calstar GG6480, and this is the eight foot rod. I would consider this bend more 70-30. Really see how you would have some good leverage with the shorter eight foot rod. And for good measures, here's my old surface iron rod. It's a Calstar Graphiter 900H. I would say the bend on this rod is closer to that Seeker Alua skinny butt. You can see it's about an 80-20 style bend. It's interesting to see that this is the style rod I used to fish. If you guys take a closer look at that handle, you can see how it's bending right through that grip section. And here's a comparison flex test. I lined up the reels in the images so that they're all in the same place. And you can kind of see how that 10 footer has a real stiff backbone going through the top, but actually has quite a play in that tip. The middle rod is the Alua PH93. You can see how that backbone has more parabolic than the others. And a shorter rod is the 6480. It has about a 70-30 bend. This is not a scientific photo, just a quick overlay so you can see the comparison on the bends. All right, let me give you my final thoughts on the surface iron rods. First of all, they're all capable rods and they're tools for the angler. So some tools work better for people than others. And right now I'm finding out which ones work best and which ones don't. In hindsight of the situation, I should have just purchased the same rod that I broke, but I did want to try something different and I got something different. So moving forward, I'm going to be running that Seeker Alua 10 footer 
and that Calstar GG6480. I'll be putting those to the test throughout the year. I may try a few different reels on that Seeker Lua. I'm not sure I have the right reel set up for that. I might be doing a few different setups to see what works best on that rod. If you guys have any questions or comments on the surface rod situation, please drop them in the comment section below. Also, if you have any recommendations, let me know. Put them in the comment section. I'm not the surface iron master by any means. I used to be really good at it. Now I'm kind of lacking. So go ahead and give me your recommendations. I'm happy to read them and accept them. Hopefully something in this video inspired you or helped you in your quest with surface iron fishing. Thanks for all the support you're giving Warbase and this channel. We are growing and it's because of you. I see those views going up every day and I appreciate all the support. So get out there, go fish and hook that giant.